In today's episode. If you can't do it perfect then don't do it. Okay. Was forced to do a task. Got my entire chain of command fired. I asked for three days off, they asked for a doctor's note, so I have way more than three days off. So let's get started. If you can't do it perfect then don't do it. Okay. Backstory, I worked retail when I was younger. Like most people it was a mixed bag, and some of my best and worst memories involve my time working in retail chains. I worked in footwear in a then blossoming sporting goods franchise, and had a real knack for it. It was rewarding helping people find shoes in their sizes, and it's heartwarming at times, especially when people with disabilities showed up and really needed hands-on assistance with things, and that was a core value the company had at the time. My hiring supervisor, whose name isn't important, was amazing and the staff was really cool too. We all liked and respected him a lot. But alas, like many good things, it came to a sudden and forceful end and upper management decided change was in order and shifted the supervisor's opening a spot in my department. That's when the new supervisor henceforth known as Brandy came in. Brandy was a transfer from another store 30 minutes away. The entire supervisor team knew and were not fond of her, but she filled a void and the district manager and store manager were big fans of her for reasons unknown. We were warned that she was a woman of many faces and would tell you or promise you things you'd never get. I learned this about her fairly quickly and before she even knew the staff, our strong suits, our schedules, or our names she had a set list of things SHE wanted done and could not be deviated from. There was also word going around she liked to make staffing changes and hire her own people when she came in. Morale died fairly quickly within the first week she was there. In short, she was a nightmare for almost the entire store. Now to the actual story. Brandy's first day was on a particularly busy summer day, and before I could even walk back to my section, I could hear her voice calling over the intercom constantly. Along the way I was greeted by the morning staff, who gave me a quick rundown of her and what she was like. Then told me to have fun. Oh boy I thought to myself. I found her in the back near the cleats and introduced myself. You have your tasks assigned to you already, and I want all of the displays finished in your areas before you leave today. I thought this was strange because I had set the displays for those exact sections the night prior. All according to the franchise standards, firmly stuffed to look like a foot was in them, no visible laces shown, and even the laces changed to go inside the shoe so they didn't obstruct the view of the top of the shoe. They were signed off as completed by the lead on duty and even complimented. I was proud of my work. I went back to the sections I did the night before and looked them over for a few seconds super confused. I shrugged it off and set to checking, or at least restuffing a few to see if I had missed something. Nope. Nothing. But I continued on as I had been instructed and did my job and things seemed like they were going pretty smooth. Later on that afternoon Brandy came back up to me asked me when I was going to finish my displays and I told her that I had. She looked at me and then back at my displays and made a look of disgust and said you're going to leave them like that? Like what? I said back confused. Nothing I did was ever really a problem in the past, and I really didn't want to piss her off, because I loved my job, and it was my first day with her. She scoffed and said like this. And then grabbed a broken metal peg off a sock end cap and proceed to jam as much paper as humanly possible into the shoe until it couldn't hold anymore. No lie, the shoe felt like someone had filled it with concrete, and the fabric even protruded on some shoes because of the pressure. It was not pretty or guideline. After watching how she did it just stood there dumbstruck because, again, this went against almost all of my training up to that point. Then she started in on me. No matter how hard I tried to give her what she wanted, but still meet the guideline I'd been trained for she didn't like it and would get me to do them again. This went on for a little bit. And then she f asterisk ked up. After an agonizing amount of time she grabbed a shoe from me and said no. Do it perfect. If you can't do it perfect then don't even try. Just leave it for someone else to do. 
Let me remind you that she had a full list of other things she wanted done, but she rang a bell, I wasn't going to ignore. So, instead of giving me another task, she gave me a loophole. I capitalized fully. Q malicious compliance. After an emotional wrecking like the one she had given me I excitedly said okay and walked away to help customers. I left her there with the display still her hand. She also said this within earshot of several other employees that were already sour with her. She didn't want me to try if I couldn't be perfect? Fine. That was exactly what I did. I did nothing on that list. For four months. I don't even remember anything it says on it. You might be wondering to yourself how did you not get fired? Well, she tried. Several times. Anytime she would try to write me up I would quote her exact words to her, the store supervisor, the leads, the district manager, and even someone in HR when they came to visit. Eventually she was told to stop because her attempts could be viewed as retaliation, and that was a huge corporate no-no. I still provided excellent customer service and got rave reviews and compliments when customers went to checkout and the store manager, and I got along really well so they were hesitant to push too hard. A few months later I changed departments and then met my now wife on a store setup trip and moved across the state. When she found out I was quitting she pretended to be upset, but everyone knew she wanted me gone. She was gone within a year of me leaving. No clue why. Totally worth it. Thanks for the funny memories, Brandy. Was forced to do a task. Got my entire chain of command fired. For obvious reason I will be omitting names and anything specific so my asterisk S is covered. I've been serving in a certain military branch for 5 years and I'm nearing the end of my contract. So the give a care is completely gone. I'm in charge of inventory of specific pieces of equipment. Smaller pieces that are used by many people at my job. From time to time these pieces disappear. Most of the time that just means things are misplaced, but we just got out of a certain period where we had many hired contractors at our job that tend to take things. Now every once in a while we conduct an inventory of these pieces of equipment for accountability reasons. When we lose things, it looks very bad on my work. More specifically, bad on my bosses. So I prepared the inventory and was startled by the amount of missing pieces. I did everything I needed to do and presented the inventory to my boss. He didn't believe we had so many pieces missing and asked for me to inventory them again. So I did, got the same number, and put the inventory in his inbox. Few months go by and I get the same thing. There can't be that many. Do another one. So I'm very compliant and do it again and again and again. This gets dragged on over a year, and I'm starting to notice something. My boss is about to leave soon, and he is deliberately pushing this off to the next guy to cover himself. So last week I was sleeping since I work nights and I'm woken up. My boss tells me I have to do a specific survey with my coworkers that will get sent up to the head honcho. This survey allows the small guy have a voice directly to the top. I tell him that I have the night watch, but he doesn't care and demands I go and do this survey. Fine. Before the survey starts our boss tells us we need to be completely honest, and all these surveys are anonymous. R.A.D. I wrote down what had been happening with the inventory and directed where they could find the documentation of the done inventories. Fast forward to yesterday. All my bosses are fired and now I'm reporting to new people who are now fixing the issues with the inventory. I asked for three days off, they asked for a doctor's note, so I have way more than three days off. Hello Reddit. I lurk a lot and realized I had my own malicious compliance a few weeks ago. My job is very mentally taxing. I also have my own mental health issues so I try my best to balance, but I just want to help so I get caught up taking more responsibilities than I am actually able to. So a couple of weeks ago I realized my mental health is in steep decline, I was ignoring the signs to push through, but anyone with mental health issues knows that you can only ignore the signs for so long. 
I try to get ahead of a mental crash and talk to my supervisor to tell them that I need three days off, WTF, and as I had the weekend off after the days I requested I figured that might be enough to get a good rest and reset. I did tell my supervisor why I needed the days, burnout, mental health, and they said they understood and would get back to me. They contact me back, I say they because right now I technically have two supervisors running my division, and say they can probably give me Wednesday, Thursday, but that they couldn't give me Friday, I ask if we can do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday instead, and I could work the Friday, have my long weekend, and that should still be fine. They say they will get back to me, I get a text soon after to ask me to help cover other shifts. And I obviously can't, so I decline. They get back to me the next day. We can get your shifts covered for Wednesday and Thursday, but not Tuesday, and you have to make up the hours. That was the straw. I just broke, I was asking for a break, because I was working too much, because it was hard for me to say no. I even call them, they had me on speaker, in tears and explain even further why I need the days, I have been going through trauma therapy, and my mental health has been declining. I had told them that I had spoken to my doctor, and that my doctor said I was showing signs of burnout and recommended some days off, which is true, as I had talked to him the day before. All they heard was doctor and said we need a doctor's note. Okay fine, good thing I have another appointment. I had to work that day just defeated because they couldn't find anyone to cover my shifts. I talked to my doctor and he says that he can tell I'm in distress, and he puts me on two weeks of leave immediately. They did not look pleased when I handed in my doctor's note. That was two weeks ago, I went back to the doctor and he extended my leave for at least another month. Cause you know straw broke the camel's back and my mental health just went down the drain. Also, when I gave them my doctor's note with four weeks on it, one of them wouldn't even look at me and the other just said oh doctor's note, thanks. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and we will see you in the next video.